Hi, I'm Alex here at Williams Gunsight Company. I get several calls and emails with questions regarding the inner workings of our foolproof or FP click adjustable peep sights. One of the more common questions I receive is how to replace the click adjustment screws with our target knobs. This video should provide a better understanding of how to use and care for your FP sight and will also show the process necessary to change over those screws. As always, Williams Gunsight Company advises professional installation by a certified gunsmith. Here's a quick breakdown of all the parts that make up our foolproof click adjustable peep sights. The attachment screws, gib lock and gib screw, also known as the angular locking bushing, aperture holder and aperture, windage adjustment screw or windage adjustment knob. For the purpose of this video, we will be referring to them both as a screw, windage locking screw, elevation adjustment screw and knob, elevation locking screw. Most FP sites use two screws for attachment. We advise 12 inch pounds of torque with a small amount of blue thread locker on any attachment screws. Several sites will require removing the top from the base in order to access the attaching screws. In order to remove the top from the base, start by removing the elevation locking screw, the gib screw, and the gib lock. Rotate the elevation adjustment screw counterclockwise until the top comes off. To remove the elevation adjustment screw, begin by removing the elevation locking screw. Keep the sight face down as though the muzzle of the gun was stuck in the ground. Push the screw up from the bottom until it pops free of the housing. Tilt the sight until the ball bearing and click spring fall out. To remove the windage adjustment screw, remove the windage locking screw and aperture. As before, keep the sight face down. The windage adjustment screw has a left-handed thread, so rotate it clockwise until the aperture holder is at the far left of adjustment. Push the aperture holder to the right until the windage adjustment screw pops free. Tilt the sight until the ball bearing and click spring fall out. If you want to change your adjustment screws to target knobs, please contact our customer service department at extension 228. To reassemble the windage assembly, insert the click spring into the housing on the front of the sight ensuring that it is not sideways. Then insert the ball bearing. Seat the aperture holder into the channel. Insert the windage adjustment screw into the housing. Turn it counterclockwise until it begins to thread into the aperture holder. Continue to thread it until the aperture holder is on the near side of the channel. Press in the windage adjustment screw until you hear it pop into place. Reinsert the windage locking screw. To reassemble the elevation assembly, insert the click spring into the housing on the front of the sight, ensuring that it is not sideways, then insert the ball bearing. Press in the elevation adjustment screw until you hear it pop in place. Slide the sight top into the base dovetail until the elevation adjustment screw seats. Turn the elevation adjustment screw clockwise until it threads into the base. Set the gib lock into its opening and rotate it until it's flush. Replace the gib screw. To adjust for windage, rotate the windage locking screw counterclockwise 90 degrees. Make your appropriate windage adjustment by turning the windage adjustment screw. To move your point of impact left, turn the windage adjustment screw clockwise. To move it to the right, turn your windage adjustment screw counterclockwise. Note, windage adjustments are reversed for FP sights that are mounted on the right side. Retighten the windage locking screw. Note that the windage locking screw needs to be tight during each shot. If your aperture holder seems loose, try tightening the windage locking screw. To adjust for elevation, rotate the elevation locking screw counterclockwise 90 degrees. Then rotate the gib screw counterclockwise 90 degrees. Make your appropriate elevation adjustments by turning the elevation adjustment screw. To move your end point of impact down, turn your elevation adjustment screw clockwise. Counterclockwise to move the point of impact up. Retighten the gib screw. Note that the elevation locking screw does not need to be tight during each shot, 
but the give lock does. Note, the elevation graduations on the side of the sight are referential only. The minute of angle click values are dependent on your gun's sight radius. For example, with a 20 inch sight radius, each click will equal 0.21 MOA, while with a 25 inch sight radius, each click equals 0.17 MOA. If you're unable to obtain zero because the sight does not go up any further, you will need a lower front sight. If you have any questions, please feel free to call our customer service department at extension 228. You can find these instructions along with all our products on our website, williamsgunsight.com.